The Once and Future King is a classic retelling of the tale of King Arthur, Merlin, and the Knights of the Round Table. Published in 1958 by English author T. H. White, it compiles much of the writer's older stories, including The Sword in the Stone, with new material. It is largely based on Le Mort d'Arthur, which was written in the late 15th century by Sir Thomas Mallory, but White includes many elements of his own imaginings which have helped shape modern fantasy over the past hundred years. George R. R. Martin, for instance, who created the Song of Ice and Fire series on which Game of Thrones is based, has cited the once and future king as a major influence. The first part, titled The Sword and the Stone, begins during the reign of King Uther Pendragon, Arthur's father. Arthur, meanwhile, lives with his foster father, Sir Ector, and is known to all as Wart. From these humble beginnings, Wart trains under the eccentric but powerful wizard, Merlin. Among his eccentricities is the fact that Merlin experiences the flow of time backward. This means that when he first meets Arthur, Merlin is in tears because, according to his perception of time, he will never meet his prized pupil and close friend ever again. It also means that Merlin knows that Arthur will inherit the throne which is why he does everything in his power to ensure Arthur is a good and just king. He does this by variously transforming Arthur into a fish, a hawk, an ant, a goose, and a badger. The idea is to teach Arthur empathy by placing him in the bodies of vastly different beasts. Part 2 is called The Queen of Air and Darkness. It introduces King Lot and the Orkney family, who will be the primary antagonists throughout Arthur's life. The family's matriarch, Queen Margaus, is a powerful witch who wishes to seduce Arthur in order to manipulate him and control him. Margaus is also Arthur's half-sister, but Arthur doesn't realize this. Despite the overall antagonism from Margaus and Lot, three of their sons, Gawain, Gaharis, and Gareth, are not evil, despite their mother's manipulations. A fourth son named Agravain, however, shares many of the same evil characteristics as his parents. Conflict like the one with the Orkney clan, Merlin argues, is important for Arthur's development as a ruler. Merlin does not subscribe to the Machiavellian idea that a might makes right. Instead, might should be used to counter those individuals, like Margaus and the Orkley clan, who wish to do violence against the innocent. In a way, Merlin argues. The conflict with the Orkneys is a good thing because it is the impetus for what Merlin knows will be Arthur's greatest achievement, the creation of the Knights of the Round Table. Part 3 is called The Ill-Made Knight. It concerns Sir Lancelot's mythic affair with Arthur's wife, Guinevere. Lancelot goes to great lengths to hide the affair from Arthur, even though Merlin has already informed Arthur about it. Part 3 shows how Arthur's and Merlin's dream of a perfect chivalric order of knights, and a utopian kingdom of Camelot to protect, is coming apart at the seams. It details how the deeds of good men are often undone by those same men's psychological or emotional frailty. This chapter also includes one of the most striking differences between the traditional Arthurian legend and T.H. White's version of it, Lancelot, rather than being seen as dashingly handsome, is described as the ugliest knight in the round table. This physical characterization helps to explain his psychological motivations for trying to be the best knight possible. Much like the conflict with Margaus leads to a better kingdom, Lancelot's real and perceived failings, his insecurity over his looks, his betrayal of his friend and sovereign, Arthur, actually make him a better knight by means of compensation and compartmentalization. The final part, the candle in the wind, is the darkest as it details the unraveling of Arthur, his closest allies, and the utopia he tried to build. It prominently features the character of Mordred, who is Arthur's illegitimate son by way of a secret, witchery-induced seduction at the hands of Queen Margaus. It is through his perceived neglect by his father that Mordred develops the hatred necessary to launch a rebellion against the king, which causes a battle that will end up killing Arthur. Moreover, Mordred believes that King Arthur attempted to have him killed by sending all babies born on a certain day floating off into the ocean. Mordred conspires with Agravain, who hates Lancelot, to take Arthur and Lancelot down by pitting them against one another. Things are already tense because of Lancelot's affair with Guinevere, who is held captive for her adultery in advance of a planned execution. But the situation is aggravated after Lancelot, in saving Guinevere, kills Gareth and Gaharis. Vowing revenge, Gawain teams with Arthur to attack Lancelot's castle. But while Arthur is away on this siege, Mordred takes over Arthur's castle and installs himself as the new king. 
Arthur returns to fight Mordred, but thanks to Merlin's knowledge of the future, Arthur knows he will die in battle. The narrative ends prior to this final showdown. The once and future king is both a fresh take on the King Arthur legend and also a powerful rumination on the nature of power and humanity. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.